Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy! So hello everybody, and we have another interview on The Idiot Quilter, and today my special guest is, um, I always want to say Monique, but it's Monica. Monica from Mona Did What? Just the name of your uh, your YouTube channel inspires me uh, with that. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little later on. But can you sort of introduce us to you and where you're located? I'm in Ohio. Um, I have, well, only one granddaughter living with me now, but I did have two. I raised my son's little girls. We have two cats, two dogs, and who knows what they're going to bring home next. So. You have a zoo, in other words. And I just like to sew, 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 sew. Well, that's great. Uh, you're, we're together in the right place then because we both love to sew, sew, sew. Uh, and, and so when you say sew, 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 are you uh, a quilter or are you? do you do all kinds of different things in sewing? I do all kinds of things. I wouldn't call myself a quilter because I've only ever made one quilt. So I just started that last year because my brother wanted a denim quilt for Christmas. So right. that's my quilting. Normally I make um, bags. Oh, okay, great. I started uh, making dance costumes when my daughter was in dance to save money. So I made dance costumes after dance costumes. And then when she was little, I had to shorten her jeans, you know, that type of thing. Right. But I really like the bags and I'm interested in this quilting. It's more of a challenge. Ah, I see. So you're what you are suggesting then is you're more comfortable with garment sewing than you are with quilting, which is kind of interesting because. My husband does uh, doesn't do quilting. He doesn't like quilting, but he loves garment sewing. I'm the other way around. I don't think I'd have the patience for doing garment sewing. And I've heard people say that if you're a quilter, um, you'd rather quilt than than sew garments because uh, sewing garments you think is too precise. And then I hear from sewists who sew garments but don't do quilting, saying they don't want to get into quilting because they think it's too precise. So what do you think? <laughs> I think quilting is more precise because if you mess up on a garment, you can kind of ease it in unless it's like a fitted shirt. I mostly just made stretchy stuff. So, you know, it would stretch if you needed it. Yeah. So I just find that really interesting. The, the two philosophies here with people who like me don't do only do the one thing don't do the other. But you say you're into bag making, which is great because I do I do make bags as well. I don't have as extensive experience with making them as you do, but um, I, I do enjoy making bags uh, too. So how did you get started in sewing? Uh, sewing, my grandmother taught me a long time ago and we. I also took home at, but I didn't get into it until I would say when I, my arthritis started acting up mm. and I needed to sew different things. I used to crochet. Right. And I really got into it when I needed the dance money. So yeah. then I really started pushing myself to sew. Yeah. And then after that, I just got used to it and I just loved it. So, and quilting, I am finding it so challenging that it's really stimulating my brain and helping me. I mean, I just think it's fascinating the things that people can do. It's yeah. just amazing. I'm so, not there. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you say about stimulating your brain because one of the things I think that for anybody who sews or quilts or does both, and as you grow older, I think you have to keep, or my philosophy is anyways, you have to keep your brain going or that's it. Things start okay. to shut down. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I, I feel that it's very easy. Like I'm retired now and I have been retired for about 10 years and I didn't do quilting until only about five years ago. I only got into it and that was by accident. I knew nothing about it beforehand, never really had any desire to sew anything. I 
didn't have a sewing machine at the time. And um, then when I got into it, what I really found was the challenge of quilting. And as you said, it's the precision, yes, but it keeps your mind going. It's that creative spark. And so I think anybody who does anything creative, whether it's sewing, quilting, paper crafts, whatever, you name it, I think it is something that we need to do to, yes. if you want to keep your life, you know, vital. Don't rot in front of a television set, you know, and I see too many of my friends who retired who've just done that. Just that's it. They're on the television. And well, I, in my theory, uh, theory about that is they're one step to the grave once they get on that couch and don't get off kind of a thing but anyways let's go on to cheerier things did anyone in your family influence you uh in so your she, my grandmother right okay thing she could sew she made my cheerleading outfit when i was young she did floral arrangements she knitted she crocheted i mean she could do anything she could take something that was a piece of crap shine it up and make it new again it was just amazing yeah i think we've all have somebody in our family that's like that my grandmother was very much the same way she did it all quilted knit crochet you know everything and she'd made tons of things for church bazaars and everything like that and i think that was where i got some of my inspiration for some of my other creative things that i pursue but uh yeah i think we we have to have someone in our family who you know inspires us i think because that's really our first introduction into anything creative right so and you said you took home ec as well and i envy you that you had that i envied all the girls in high school who could take home ec because when i went to high school boys were not allowed to take that you know you had to take shots i took shot too oh well you were lucky you were in a progressive school because the girls could not take shop when i went to high school they just kept the two sexes separated that way i know it's very different today in school which is a good thing you know it, it's all part of the creative arts oh what was that they don't have home ec now no they call it something complete well when i was teaching because i'm, I'm a, uh, an ex-teacher uh retired teacher they called it consumer consumer something and i think they have a new name for it now <laughs> so but i i think it's great that now in the school system that it's open to either sex it doesn't matter with it but okay so i notice you've got a creation on the wall behind you so do you want to tell us a little bit about that that is my barn quilt i did not make it i okay. found it facebook marketplace and it was only $20 free shipping. I couldn't pass it up. I figured it wouldn't be as good as the picture. It was. And it's all like cross stitch and they quilted it and it's just beautiful. Yeah. And I had it for a year trying to hang it up and I didn't know how to. So I went and I finally bought a just an old curtain hook and just hung it right on the wall. And there. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. You say you paid only 20 bucks for it obviously the person who was selling it did not understand the value of that you know no. because no, I paid several hundred for that yeah yeah really because the time and the effort and you say this cross stitching in it and quilting and the whole bit yeah you got a bargoon for sure on that so do you have a favorite creation or free or favorite creations uh the favorite thing i made was a memory bag i made for my mom I made it out of um, my stepdad's shirt, his favorite shirt. And I used the compass pattern. I think it was by, like noodle head or something like that. I can't remember, but I made that for her and she just loved it. That Now that's interesting. I've heard of memory quilts, but I've never heard of a memory bag. So I'm assuming then you said you made it from an old shirt from your uh, stepfather. So that... Yeah. Um, that's really kind of interesting. I, I don't imagine you have it with you now to show it to us, but. No, I don't. That's too bad because I would have liked to have seen that, but I've never heard of some, something like that, uh, a bag out of a shirt. So yeah, you know, was, was that a pattern? I got the pattern. It's from Noodlehead. I just took a regular bag pattern. I cut the shirt apart to make the most out of the fabric. And then I took those pieces and put it on the pattern 
to make it. Okay. Actually, that sounds really cool. Great idea. Yeah. Hmm. It's got cargo pockets on it and everything that I made and put on there. Because he always wore cargo pants. So I found a pattern that had cargo pockets. That so. sounds that sounds really I'm kind of interested now in thinking of trying something like that because I can see with the pockets and the whole bit. And I wonder if there's a way you could probably make your handles out of the sleeves if it's a long sleeve. Yes, you could. Yeah, if, yeah. It's, if you have enough fabric for it all. But yeah. Fabric. But I use the sleeves for the cargo pockets. Oh, so okay. I am making a, a handle, I believe, out of vinyl, but I'm not sure. Right. At last last year for Mother's Day. Yeah. Well, I think that would be really quite a cute idea. Something a little bit different too. Hmm. The see, I told you this is all creative. It keeps your brain going because now my brain is going, going. Ooh, what could I do with that? So. And whenever I do something new, I always just get an old piece of clothing or something and try it on that first before I ruin any good fabric. And that's a lot a of times it's better with the clothing. Yeah, actually, that's a really good idea, too. So, yeah, because fabric, as we well know, is it, just astronomical in price anymore. It's gone way up. Uh, like everything else, I guess. But yeah, that's a great idea. Practice on some old scrap of something. I suppose you could go to a thrift store too and pick up like some old clothing there. Like, and you know, it costs you a lot less there than to buy actual fabric for it. And then when you get it perfected, away you go on the good stuff. Oh, I like that. See, I learn something every day. I got two ideas now coming yeah. out of this. It's great for me. I don't know how it is for you. <laughs> yeah, I for old vintage tablecloths, uh, any kind of canvas tablecloth, you know, without a bunch of stains, because right. then I take those and I make market bags out of them and totes. And I use the linen from the t old ta vintage tablecloths for the lining of Good the idea. market. And I, I think the last one I did, I got six totes out of two tablecloths, cost me two bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't lose on that, can you? But, you know, it's also keeping in the theme of sustainability and, you know, recycle, upscale, you know, kind of stuff there, too, as well. So because where else is that fabric going to go? It's going to end up in landfill eventually. So great ideas. So I'm going to change uh, the question a little bit here and I'm going to ask you what now, this is kind of a hard question. How would you characterize yourself as a sewist? A sewist? Would you call yourself traditional, modern, freeform, experimental, exploratory? I would say traditional with experiments in there, experimental in there, because I love all the old vintage stuff. I just absolutely love it. The old quilts, you know, the little sun bonnets and all that okay. stuff. I love that, but I like to give it a a newer spin been on it right now there is a lot of controversy right now because there's a trend happening uh in quilted clothing uh jackets especially and people are going out and they're grabbing old quilts or vintage quilts or ones they find at thrift stores and they're changing them into garments and then there's a group of people who say that's okay because they've been cast off anyways they're really not antiques they're probably worn you're giving them new life and then there's another school of thought that says no that's sacrilegious to take something like that like a quilt that somebody spent hours and hours on and cut it up and make it into something else so you were talking about finding uh old fabrics and things like that vintage tablecloths and things like that so how do you feel about that whole issue about you know we it depends of the quilt and the age now there are some quilts you know if they only have a little mark or something like that I wouldn't dare cut it up but if there's something that can't be repaired and it has big holes over here but you have a section that's good it's just going to end up in the garbage somewhere because nobody wants except for me wants an old tattered quilt I have one on my bed that's cut holes I just love it <laughs> but I could see using that because it's beyond repair. But if it's something nice or that could be repaired, I wouldn't cut it up. 
but if somebody else does, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much of the same school of thought. You know, if 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 it's if it's tattered and it's torn, but there's part of it you could use in something else, you're giving it some extended life. I don't see anything wrong with it. But uh, there are those out there that just doesn't matter. They get really uptight. Well, I say life's too short to get that uptight over something like that. So 100 years, new people uh, kind of a thing. So I think you're in your work area right now. So can you yeah. describe it to me? Like, is it a large or small space, an extra bedroom in your house? or? It's actually the corner of my bedroom. Oh, this is the okay. room here. And then just on the other side of my desk is my bed and my dresser. And then I have fabric storage going along my bed. <laughs> you and live to, in it. To kind of break it up, I have an, it was an old wooden thing. My grandmother hung her doll clothes on because she collected dolls. So I have a quilt on that to kind of break it up. But yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you know, we we have to do with what we've got, right? And right. Uh, make it all work out. So, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. And I was thinking, too, if, is it a double bed? Yes. So, basically, you've got an area to spread out your, your, your sewing and, you know, can lay it out. Because that's one of the biggest complaints most people have about small areas for sewing. And if you're a quilter, you don't have room for design wall where you don't have room to really lay your quilt out when you're sandwiching it and uh i used to be like that too then i got a long arm and so now i don't fear basting a quilt but um yeah but you make do with what you've got uh, and that's the beauty of it at least if you can't sleep at night you can always get up and work on something <laughs> i put the thing across so i couldn't see my sewing machine because i'd be laying there trying to sleep and i'm like there's a sewing machine. I'll just hop on for a minute and then it'll be three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what that's like. Um, okay, so do you have a favorite tool or technique? Well, actually, let me back up. What what kind of sewing machine do you have? And do you have only one or do you have several? I have several. I was going to um, say you probably do. <laughs> is a Juki mm -hmm. uh, 2000 QI. Mm -hmm. I use that every day. I bought a Genome HD something. I used it once. And then downstairs, well, I also have a featherweight, but I it was my grandmother's. It's over there, but I haven't. I'm waiting for the Zymol or something to clean it or whatever they call that yeah. before I buy it. And then uh, downstairs, I have my old brother, the one I started on. My grandpa bought me that, so that will be here forever. I have two Singer 9115s, I think. I have a Singer 301, the Slant, and I have some kind of old Kenmore. I haven't cleaned it up or sewed on it yet. I got it at a estate sale, and then I have another one that my mom gave me and I'm not sure what it is. I haven't looked it up yet. My God, you have a museum of sewing machines, really. I thought I had a lot, but nope, you beat me by hands down on, on that. So what is it about having all those sewing machines? I mean, I know your featherweight has got memories to it. The one from your grandfather has memories to it and then that, but you have all these other machines as well. So would you call yourself a collector? <laughs> And a lot of times um, I'll fix them up. Well, one of the older machines down there was my grandmother's and one um, my stepdad gave to my mom. So those two I'll have to keep. But the other ones I find at estate sales for like two bucks or something are um, sometimes a dollar. And I just can't pass them up. I bring them home and my mom's like, what are you going to do with another one? But I get them out, I clean them all up, get them running, and then I find somebody that needs it or I resell it for cheap to yeah. somebody, you know, that needs a sewing machine. Or I just keep them and sew on them every now and then. Yeah, actually, that's another good idea I had not thought of. So in a sense, you're recycling sewing machines, but if you can get them that cheap and if you know what you're doing when fixing them up, yeah, great to lend put it on to somebody who maybe one can't afford a sewing machine or maybe someone right. who wants to get into sewing but doesn't want to make a major investment so they can get this machine at a reasonable price so do you actually understand how to fix the mechanics of a sewing machine 
no. I know how to go in and if things are stuck and they're full of grime and they're not working, I would clean all that out and get them moving and then sewing. But if there's something like I couldn't put in a new motor, mm, unless right. YouTube video, I might be able to try and figure it out. But no, I no electrics or anything like that. I just clean them up and get them moving. Well, from and my experience, nine times out of 10, it's because the machine is so gunged up with crap. That's why they're not working properly more than that. That's why it's, I'm a great proponent for like, keep your machine clean. <laughs> you know, this morning. <laughs> I mean, I clean mine on a regular basis after every project, I clean the machine and give it a little bit of oil and away it goes because I mean, they're expensive, you know, modern machines, it's an investment. So you got to look after your investment. So do you have, a, so I was going to ask about that too. Do you have a favorite tool or something that you reach for all the time when you're sewing, you can't live without? Besides my machine, the seam ripper. <laughs> yep. Well, thing. I'm always taking it apart, putting it back together, taking it apart, putting it back together. And I also have little rulers like this one, but. I have, if I can find it, because sometimes I can't always see where the seam thing is. So I have one of these little that tell you the seam allowance. I line it up with the needle and then I put a uh, painter's tape on. So then I don't have to worry about trying to see down there. I can just follow the blue line. Yeah. I think That's painter's funny. tape is one of uh, a sores or a quilters. One of their most go-to um, tools is the painter's tape for exactly the reason you're saying, because I don't know about you, but as, as I get older, my eyesight's not as good anymore. And that's, you know, trying to see where that needle is going to go. You know, I mean, you can put your hand underneath it, but that only ends up in disaster. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to keep your fingers, I think. So um, if you have had all the money in the world, is there a piece of equipment you would invest in? Yes. And what is I, it? A great big table on wheels that had storage under around so that I could cut and just walk around instead of, you know, I have this little, it's a bar over here, bar height, but, you know, when you're making a bigger quilt, there's, there's not much room. So I would get a big cutting table. Yep. Uh, yeah, big cutting table is probably, I would think is probably the most essential thing for when you're into any kind of sewing, quilting or sewing and size matters, <laughs> the yeah. bigger, the better, <laughs> you know, really for I'm something. About to get like a Murphy bed and having it in the wall and then the table come down, but I thought, no, that's too much. <laughs> well, I don't know. That sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> especially in a small space i think that would be great well you know they do have they're very very expensive but i have seen these fold up kind of desk table things that are like a murphy bed this all collapse up against your wall when you want it. you just open them out i've seen some of them that are all electric and i mean get, uh -oh. yeah. i'd be playing right. that all day <laughs> oh look let's push the button oh look at that oh push the button again that would be fun <laughs> You know, or one of those tables, you know, that's on the motor that come up and go down. I yeah. don't have room for something like that, but boy, I, I'd love those. I think those would be great, but you know, we can live and dream. <laughs> or uh, I could just get a piece of plywood and put it on my bed and use it that way. Yeah, true, true. Well, you know, asked. <laughs> yep. We tend to be inventive you know to 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 use what we've got and to make things better in the small space we have so yeah all kinds of, of things we can do um so changing course now have you ever belonged to any kind of groups or design teams or online groups or guilds no nope you're a loner <laughs> yeah. you're a loner on that and okay so have you ever had a desire though to join anything like that Yes, but um, I don't do well in public with people. I just seem to clam up. I don't know why. And I just get nervous where online, it doesn't seem to bother me. You know, uh, I've heard that from other people as well. Um, a lot of, I've heard this from a lot of YouTube creators. 
Um, they said they characterize themselves as an introvert, but for some reason, when they're doing, they're on YouTube, they're the exact opposite from that. Even myself, I consider myself uh, somewhat of an introvert as well, and yet. I was used to being up in front of people all day long when I was teaching, like kids, high school kids, a whole bit, and staff and everybody like that. And I didn't have any problem with that. But that's just kind of funny uh, about that kind of thing. But I think one thing that COVID has shown us or has given to us, if you, if we can say COVID has given us something positive, I think is the Zoom uh, community, the ability yes. to do like what we're doing right now. Um and I know you've been online in with other groups for so days and things like that. You know, I love those. I, I love those better than I like the in-person ones. I don't have to lug my stuff, <laughs> you know, and if I, and if there's something I don't want to listen to, I can always turn off my speaker <laughs> kind of a deal. So, yeah. Um, all right. So do you have, okay, where do you get your supplies? Do you get your your stuff from, I know you go to thrift stores and stuff like that, but when you're out there buying sewing supplies, thread, other fabric and things, do you do it online or do you go to, and do that, is that your main source? Yes. So do you have if any favorite online card, stores? If I get a gift card for Joann's from somebody at Christmas, then I'll go to Joann's, but normally all online. So what stores do you like online? It depends on what I'm buying. If I'm buying something for quilting, I, I went to the Fat Quarter Shop, I think Fabric Cafe, Amazon, um, Missouri Star. Um, I've been looking at Bear Creek Quilting, mm -hmm. Alaska, I'm not sure. Yeah, they're in um, Alaska. I shop some on Etsy if there's fabric I want. I used to shop on eBay all the time, but I've gotten away from that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a big online shopper, too, although I'm lucky I do have a really great uh, quilt store right in the town that I live in that I go to quite a bit as well. But, um, yeah, I, and that's another thing that came out of COVID for me anyways, was I didn't buy I didn't buy fabric. I mean, I, I bought stuff from Amazon, but not fabric in that. And so I started to explore the wonderful world of online shopping and have never looked back, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> I'll never go back to in-person shopping. I like it so much better. There's no rude, rude people. Yep. There's no, uh, you know, when you yes. go in there. Yep, I agree. Nice, but I actually don't need any fabric because I inherited all my grandmother's fabric. So I could probably sew for the rest of my life and not buy any. <laughs> but you, but know, I still I, do. you know what I always say? It's not a need it's a want. And people always say to me, I have a, a fairly large fabric stash too that I've acquired. And people say to me, why? Oh, what are you going to do with that? When I go into it, I said, I don't know. It's well, why are you buy it? It's pretty. Yep, that's <laughs> it's what pretty. I, like. <laughs> <laughs> I like to look at it, you know, kind of a thing. And they always give you this weird look like, well, yeah, but you got to make something of it. Eventually I will. And if I don't, it's decor. So, yeah. um, okay. So, um, do you have any favorite experts or sources of information you turn to when you want to learn something new or you're, uh, you're learning a technique or something like that? I bought a bunch of uh, quilting books on Facebook Marketplace. I go on YouTube all the time. Um, I like watching Kendall. He does quilt blocks. <laughs> really yeah. nice as it and it's easy to understand and i like the guy that sews because he has those doxies and he does like a whole thing and yeah. then my favorite is Teresa louise oh and yeah it just sit and chat and i just turn it on while i'm sewing and kind of listen while i'm sewing but um yeah i just hop on anybody's channel that's on and just start watching or listening while i sew yeah. And I always find, too, that um, I learn so much, you know, and they also it's if I'm I'm working away on a quilt, I'll put them on in the background. I may not actually be watching them what they're doing, but I'm listening to them. And I just it's like somebody's with you when you're yeah. when you're sewing, you know, kind of a thing uh, and that. But I mean, the stuff I've learned, I mean, YouTube is wonderful, isn't it? I mean, what did we do without YouTube? Uh, beforehand it's just a wealth of of knowledge and, and 
the whole bit and inspiration too. Um, so do you have any goals or challenges, you know, bucket list things that you want to do when it comes to your sewing? Yes, I want to continue in quilting one block at a time mm -hmm. until I get better. And I'd like to this year, this 2023, learn to free motion quilt mm. doing that. Yeah. And well, get better quilt as you go because my the back of my brother's quilt was a hot mess, but he <laughs> didn't notice. So, yeah. Well, I, we're our own worst critics, aren't we? We know where the mistakes are, but, you know, don't ever point them out to anybody else, especially people who are non-quilters or non-sewers. They'll never know. And if they do point out something, go, oh, yes, that's called a customization. It's an investment. Yeah. I did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and that's your story. And you stick to it uh, with it. But you've got, yeah, you've got a bit of a, some lofty goals there then, the free motion quilting. Okay. Yeah, I bought but I just haven't used it yet. Yeah. Well, take it slow and take a little at a time and just expect that it's not going to be perfect the first time. It's practice, practice, practice. And I'm still, actually, I'm not practicing. I'm cheating. I, I bought myself a long arm a year ago and then I got the computerized program. I let it do it. <laughs> but I don't that. <laughs> uh, well, for me, that isn't cheat. Some people say I'm cheating, but I don't think I'm cheating because I had to learn the technology and how to use it. And I'm all about technology. I think that's why I love sewing so much. I love the machines, you know, yeah. in, in all it that really fascinates me about the machines. I like earlier we were talking about you fixing up old machines. Um, I would dearly love to take a course in uh, sewing machine repair, like to really learn what they because I'm fascinated by how they work and the whole bit. But trying to find a course closest yeah, place I can no find problem. is in Texas. So and I'm not near anywhere near Texas. So yeah. I mean, there might be some things online. I haven't explored it that far into it, but yeah. 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 YouTube, things like that. So but I just find it really interesting. But then I'd have to go out and buy myself a really old machine that I didn't care about to practice on. I'm not taking my good ones apart. No. no not with what I spent on those suckers. Um, so let's talk, we're talking about YouTube. Now let's talk about YouTube in terms of your YouTube channel. I already said it's called Mona Did What, which I love the name. Why did you call it that? Uh, my daughter and I were just goofing around and this year has been crazy for me. Um, I got, well, last year I got braces and she's like, what, what are you doing that? Your teeth are just going to fall out for. And I go, <laughs> I'm like, no. So it was a combination of that. And uh, when I was growing up, I was a tomboy. So most of the people that know me would never think that I would sew or do anything like that. So it was, and Mona was my nickname. Uh, so I just kind of got brainstorming and that's what it came up. And I was going to change it. My daughter says, no, I love that name. Don't change it. <laughs> well, it's a great name because it really does attract people uh, to your YouTube channel because you want to know what Mona did. <laughs> you know, you know, that. But why did you start it in the first place? For something to do. Hmm. Okay. Because yeah. at first it wasn't sewing. I was just posting pictures of the dog. Hmm. And then I thought, I was going to go camping and I could film my camping. Well, I never went camping once. So <laughs> <laughs> it just ended up the sewing just kept taking it over, taking it over. Well, it's so, a great, it's fun. a great channel. I I've been catching up on your videos uh, as well. Now that I, I discovered it and uh, I actually discovered it because of uh, Sean, the guy who sews his and I know oh, okay. you were on there and then I saw oh there's somebody I don't know let me check this out so one thing led to another so I'm really enjoying it and um, I'm hoping that uh, more people after they see this interview too will check it out I will put the link to your YouTube channel in the show notes when this goes up so people can check it out because you know I'm really into um, interviewing people who are not the big names out there, you know? I don't want the Jenny Dones and the, um, you know, the, what's her name? Angela Walters and the, 
all the other great na big names out there. And some people asked me to interview them. And I said, no, for one, they would turn me down if they even acknowledge me because I'm too small for them. It's not important. Plus, they are people who are running businesses, big businesses out yeah. there. And it might be a good they don't make mistakes. If yeah. I, leave it, I leave it in. Exactly. So. That's what I do too. That's why mine's called the idiot quilter because I'm an idiot moves. So, and you know, and I think that's important all, all serious being serious. Now, I think it's important that people see that you're not going to get it perfect the first time, but those big names, they don't put that in their videos. So they make it like you do this, you do that, you do that. It's perfect. There you go. Move on kind of thing. It's not. And I also like to acknowledge the, what I would call the average sewer quilter because i think a lot of people are intimidated by if they're thinking about getting into something like this and if they see that you know no people do make mistakes anybody can do this if you just persevere and try things out and don't worry it's only fabric and thread so yeah and that's why i like your youtube channel because there it is you know people can see you're just like the rest of us you know out there uh you know we have our our good days we have our bad days with our quilting so you know um but you said you also created it because it was something to do and this goes back to what we're saying before about sewing and quilting keeping our minds going and that's a, another aspect right because you're learning new technology plus dementia runs in our family so and i don't want it <laughs> And same with me, same in my family too. And yeah, I don't want it either. So I'm trying to stave off that if there's any possibility of that I could get that because no, I don't want that. So do you have, do you have any other social medias that uh, you're on? Like, do you have a Facebook group or anything like that? I have a Facebook. I just started that not too long ago. Um, and it's Mona did what? And the same with Instagram. Okay, because I'll add those. It, actually, if you can just send me an email with the links to all of your social media, then I can embed them into the show notes and then other people can check those out as well uh, with it. So on your Facebook uh, group, what are your plans for it? Is it a place where people can share their ideas? Yeah. yeah. And share. I, okay. And do you do, um, I know on YouTube, you show how to do things. Are you intending to do more tutorials and things like that or yes that's great um um shorter versions for those that already kind of know how to sew and just want ideas and then a longer version for the beginner that you know really needs that that's a good idea already learning nobody told me about tension or what stitch length and stuff like that and that was the hardest part for me was figuring out all that stuff yeah no, I think that's a great idea. And I like the idea of the format of the shorter ones for those that already know something and then the longer ones for the beginners, because that will really help. You know, I think that appeals to your beginner and your advanced groups and everybody in between something for everybody. I think that's a great idea with that. So if you have any, do you have any advice for anyone who wants to get started in sewing? Just do it. Grab a sewing machine and just start practicing. Grab some your old jeans or your old shirt or whatever you have laying around and just start sewing. If you saw the first tote bag I ever made on that little brother from my grandfather and I made it out of my grandmother's shirt, I didn't line it or nothing. I still have it, but it's downstairs. It's like this big and it's so flimsy. Probably if you put your wallet in there would fall through <laughs> you know but you just keep going just keep going yep. going going and watch lots of videos that's how i did it yep i i think that's really great advice for it i think what you're really saying is just be fearless you know just give it a shot what the heck what do you have to lose you know right. with it no big deal just try again that's right that's right you, you know it, there aren't any sewing police out there you know so and if if you show it to somebody and they think there's a mistake and they don't like it they're not your friend <laughs> right. get rid of them find new people yeah <laughs> with it uh well do you have any um anything else you'd like to say or anything um you'd like to end this 
interview with? No, but I do have one sewing thing I'd like to show you that was my is my favorite. Hold yes, on. Yes, please do show that to us. Love to see it. Here oh. it is. Oh my goodness. What's this that is, made out of? It's metal. It's my grandmother's button box. And it's full of buttons. Oh. And I used to sit under her sewing machine and play with these buttons when I was growing up. Oh, geez. Well, that that's kind of something. That's a really nice personal memory to have. Yeah. Ooh, and, and, the, and the box is kind of beautiful. At first, I thought maybe you made the box, but that's why I asked what it was made from. But And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, that's... I and it goes with it but i don't care about it I just like this. <laughs> do you use the buttons <laughs> these no no they're... the other one i have mason jars downstairs mm. full of buttons she had so many buttons that nobody needs that many buttons <laughs> true so, and i have one big box of buttons that i'm gonna you know pass on to other people but yeah i have more buttons than you ever would ever need yeah, well, you know, some buttons can be also valuable because, you know, rare ones, older buttons and things like that. So oh, yeah. I have some, but there's just too many to go through. I just put them in jars and look at them. <laughs> when I crocheted, I used to use the big decorative buttons like on a scarf or neck scarf. But other than that, no, I just like looking at them. Yeah, well, they're pretty, <laughs> you know, it's like fabric. It's pretty. You don't need yeah. a purpose for it. If it brings you joy, as what's her name says, then, you know, hang on yeah. to it. Well, this has been great. Um, um, I, I'm just thinking here if there's anything else I need to ask you, but I think we covered a lot. So okay. thank you so much for doing this interview. Um, I am going to put it up very soon and I will have all your social links. So don't forget to so send those to me and I'll put those okay. in the show notes. And I want to encourage everybody to check out your YouTube channel because your YouTube channel is wonderful and I'm hoping it's going to grow and it will. After this interview, there will be new people. That's what part of well, this work. Well, thank you again for uh, agreeing to this great interview. And I'm just stay online. I'm going to end the recording now. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>